Show up to Mark Shuttleworth's house and be like, I want <laughs> Windows 11. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell Alex we come up with. I'm old man Vin piloting our little starship that's not in the stars, nay, it's in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, joined every week by Jordan Swang, the man with the whatever the hell that is in his hand. What is it indeed? No one cares. Pedro Matias joins us <laughs> all the way from the Isles of Britannia and you at home. Shot Realm, dynamic, helping us form. Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, we need to take a moment and pay our respects to the glorious thing that is Jordan Swang's new PlayStation controller. <laughs> oh, oh my God, so pink. That's so I, uh, pink. Introduce <laughs> Juicy. <laughs> yeah, the juice shock, the juice sense five, I think we're going to call it. Um, I guess I got to change the name of it in uh, Steam input so that it identifies as the, the juice put juice sense. But yeah, no, I, 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 we, I, got, I got it for free because we, we cashed in a bunch of points for like coupons and shit. We got a bunch of gift cards and you got to spend them all at one go. So, uh, yeah, this ended up uh, topping off our, our, our bunch of cleaning supplies and i am kind of your curious though man like that's the new playstation uh 5 controller have you used it anything or um i dicked around in borderlands very briefly with it yeah. or uh yeah tiny tina's wonderland but then because that's a first person shooter i immediately switched back to uh keyboard and mouse like, yeah. like a sane person the correct yeah so <laughs> yeah but i it, it it did work it did pick up it worked out of the box I mean, I mean, these, these days, like, it's not, it's not like the early days where they're like, ah, we kind of have this driver working. <laughs> where uh, works. Steam literally went out of its way to say, no, no, this isn't a dual sense. This is a dual shock four, and it's going to use those drivers. <laughs> well, and, and, and now it flags uh, features for dual sense as well. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so now, now I get to play around with that. It's neat. And I, my main motivation for this is that Bluetooth still doesn't work on this guy. So, oh, <laughs> oh. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all current on my, on my controllers now. I have all current gen controllers. But you're rocking and rolling on Thursdays with Tiny Tina. Still looking for some people to come join in? Yeah, we, we're going in with Jalad. Um, I think we're, we're almost at the end of chapter two. Uh, I don't know. How, I, don't, I never know how long these games are because there's like always a shit ton of side quests. And they're like, oh, well, you need to be level X in order to go to the next thing. So pro- probably, probably about like little close to the halfway point. I'd, I'd hazard, I guess. So yeah, if you want if you want to join in with that, uh, just ping me in uh, Discord and seven seven thirty on uh, Thursdays. Yeah. Like that. How about you, Pedro Mateus? Uh, I've been uh, basically trying to eke out the last bits of content out of New World before the uh, update that's coming on the twelfth drops. So yeah, I there's. I've done most of the, like, a party is mandatory, so I just queue up to play with randos. Uh, but there's a couple of expeditions, that's what they call them, um, that no one queues up for. I don't know why, I'm kind of curious now. <laughs> They're high-level ones, too. You'd think that people would want to do the high-level ones to get the better shit, but apparently not. <laughs> get a bunch of people in there, like, grinding. Is there, is there an, like, a gray market economy for that game, or is just not enough people... Uh, there's not enough people playing, oh. and there is a, uh, like an auction house in the game, like all MMOs have, and everything is stupidly expensive, like the s- stuff you might actually want to use is stupidly expensive, and you can't make any money in that game, because everything costs money. You craft an item, you have to pay a tax on the, uh, the station. You, um put anything up for sale, you have to pay a tax on both putting it for sale, and then on the actual sale price. Uh, you, oh, so it's like it's like South Korea, it, it, effectively. Yes, for, 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 for Twitch, yeah. <laughs> it, it's like the most uh, Amazon game that you can think of because everything's fucking taxed. <laughs> I don't know, man. What, what if they have like a uh, uh, forging Prime? Where you pay a month <laughs> yeah. subscription? Well, can you, can you, can you hook in your Amazon Prime subscription? Prime. <laughs> can, can you can you Prime to win? Can you do like secret double Prime? Oh, no, man. if you have uh, Prime Gaming, which if you're paying for Prime, you do, um, you can you you can get some like uh, furniture for your house and some cosmetic bullshit. Mm. Gentlemen, okay, I got a new thing. A thing. <gasps> That's right. right. 
Uh, the, also red. Yes. No, no, no. It was different. Look, the logos went through a goth phase. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Friday. It's in love. No longer white. It is now nice and shiny black. Uh, this is the new focus, right? Generation four. I was looking around. I was like, has anybody done like the Linux thing? Because I know these uh, the new kernel support is landing in uh, six eight. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, hey, let's go plug this in and uh, poke it with a Linux stick. And I'm going to get up to that probably this upcoming week. Well, stay tuned for that. Even like if you get a generation one, two or three YouTuber special, two in, two out. And uh, yeah, we're going to find out. Uh, it's got some a uh, little more brains than the old ones do. So that should be interesting to play around with. And also for my brothers and sisters with their Firewire audio interfaces, uh, I, I was informed uh, I, I still need to make a ruling on the field about FATO support. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, appara apparently Director of Desktop at Red Hat is now right. he requires your, se your seal yes. of approval. Uh, the, the Lord of Firewire. I, I am holding up uh, <laughs> progress. The, the, the steward of Gondor over here eating God your damn. tomatoes like a little bunny rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, what? You're not going to sing for me? <laughs> Pedro, sing for the man. Damn it. They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. What? Wrong song. <laughs> we should have never taught the horse how to sing. Uh, you know, I, I, I tried, but it turns out the horse is a mezzo soprano, and I'm not going to try and hit those notes. It's the Steve Lennox. Of the week. Yes. And as... Uh, <laughs> As you know, as beta client updates go for the Steam Deck, this one is fairly small in the amount of uh, things they've introduced, but they've introduced a fairly important one. If you've played games ever, uh, you may remember that games uh, didn't really used to have mouse look, as it were. So there used to always be a button that was center view, which would just make your character look at, you know, the horizon bit. And, uh, well, Steam Input now has a thing that does that without the game necessarily having that itself. So you can have the reset to horizon, as they're calling it, under the mouse actions. And, yeah, it'll look all the way down and then 90 degrees back up. There, done. <laughs> that's... That's, the, that's nice, you know, especially when you're, you're playing first-person shooter games with a uh, with controller. You can sometimes get yourself in a little bit of a weird spot spot when you're when you're jiggling your analog stick around especially when you throw gyros in the mix so just being able to snap back is very very yeah nice. i got to think of it and i'm like this would have been real um handy and interesting i don't know when this thing was out oh yeah right <laughs> my beloved steam controller but yeah 100 percent more reset horizon action and yes where the hell was that <laughs> for my steam controller like that would have been so much easier well that that and the gyros it had the gyro capability and they didn't fucking yes. turn it on until right. much later right we had so to like, discover the hidden functionality of like yeah Ooh. dude but this still counts as a macro you cheaters <laughs> it's not very democratic of you to use this uh i was kind of surprised though because it held divers to get a mention in this and they're like yeah it's uh people are i'm like you're playing held divers too in your steam deck you were brave man like I, I guess yeah for for playing over Wi-Fi. I, I don't game, gameplay wise, you could probably get away with a controller, but like yeah, it is a third yeah, it is a third person shooter, so it's probably and Sony's involved with it. If it's not a Sony I, I, game, it's well, it, it's strictly like, talking about the Smiro Vision quality that you're going to end up with by the time you get it running on a Steam Deck, man. I mean, yeah, you just run it, run it on 40p low. It's fine. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it looks fine. I mean, it's I mean, only yeah, on, 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 screen, on, on, so yeah, on a seven-inch okay. screen. Yeah, it, it, it looks fine. <laughs> Not our only Steam Deck news. We got to talk about hackathons. Uh, Romeo yeah. said, "Vicious" from our Discord dropped this in to the. Yeah, this this got uh, this got a plug on Dextero, and this is from our Reddit post because it was a slow news day on Fuck February twenty yeah. eighth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, some someone someone brought their Steam Deck to a hackathon. And they wrote a job interview app on there. Yeah, uh, and why does they get Windows on it? I know, right? It, it, <laughs> it, man, it's the bottom right hand side. It looks so much like fucking Windows 10. It throws me off every time I got to do a double take. We were and we were talking about this. We're like, yeah. It, tur it turns out that like it is kind of the Microsoft Linux desktop environment because it's one of the only desktop environments that has permission to look like that from Microsoft. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this guy hooked up his Steam Deck to a dock with a keyboard and a monitor, 
And turns out that, you know, even on Steam Decks, Linux is a pretty decent development platform. You, you know, you got a cockpit, you got like toolbox and stuff, and you have a decent development environment. You don't really need much. You can have a text editor and a compiler or whatever and build your app. And yeah, this is what this guy Most does. Most everything is a flat pack anyway. So just load up Discover and away we go. And yeah, with a portable monitor, he's using a slightly less than portable monitor, but uh, like an external monitor and a keyboard, it could very well win against laptops, at least the ones without dedicated GPUs. And battery wise, even as bad as the battery is in the OG deck, people still manage to get over eight, uh, eight hours of um, dead cells playing, actively playing dead cells on it, which is significant product productivity wise because you usually have to have a much lower power cpu laptop like a chromebook or a macbook uh which when you compare it to a macbook it's like oh so it has a similar battery life to a macbook but it's a 400 dollar machine okay 500 or 600 with the mouse and the uh, keyboard and the uh dock and the display, if you want to have a bigger screen, but yeah, it it, it that's still a pretty good price, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, he won an award because he got like a, a, a job interview. Crafting was part of the uh, one of the applications. Yeah, you, you 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 build an app that you could like submit for a job interview yeah, or something. Yeah. I think that's pretty dope. Uh, but like he brings up like the disadvantages to quote him. We're just getting it set up. You know, he's used to Ubuntu, the Steam OS. It uses that custom arch distribution. That got me thinking, man. Is there just a regular, like, productivity? You know, all business, no game distribution. It's called Hollow ISO. Man. No, no, don't no. You, don't you know? Nah, man. Like, I want something that's... I don't want any of these damn games on my Steam Deck, man. I'm trying to get work done, Jordan. Ah, so, so, so then you want Haiku. Uh, yeah, you can run Haiku on your Steam Deck. Um, I, I, but I, I, Nobara I has... <laughs> Nobara has a Eggy has gone out of his way to make sure that Nobara works on the Steam Deck so you can have an actual distro that's not purely Steam OS. Flat packified. Yes. <laughs> All right. yeah, and, I, and, and, and again, um, what do you call it? Uh, the Fedora project, they put out uh, like a toolbox container, which is basically just like you run it and then it's just a full development environment that persists. I so, mean, I, I can definitely get behind that, man. But I mean, what, what, what's like the real feasibility of this, though? Because like I, I, when I think about the Steam Deck, it, it's like uh, you could use that in a pinch, man. Probably not the best. You don't. I don't know if you always want to show up to a laptop fight here in your Steam Deck. Especially and, and, when you consider the things that you really need in order for it to be a productivity tool, like the monitor, like maybe a keyboard. And I don't know. Um, the, the guy was saying, like, this was kind of just a challenge he, he said to himself. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Can, can, yeah, can, can, can you do this on a Steam Deck? And like, yeah, you know, you know, if you're actually trying to, like, sit down and make something, a laptop is probably the better option. But if you only have one machine. Eh, you can, I mean, like I said, it works, works in a bunch, right? Yeah. Like, you, you yeah. can definitely get stuff <laughs> done. Uh would you ever consider trading in? Would anybody? Hey, leave us a comment if you would consider trading in your laptop for Steam Deck, or maybe you already have, or maybe you're just like. I never would buy trade a in. I would trade in my work laptop for a work desktop. Honestly, I would. I would rather have like a desktop PC for, for as like a work machine. Yeah, uh, I I wouldn't necessarily trade a laptop for a Steam Deck, but I would absolutely if I had a gaming laptop. With, you know, big bulky power supply and loud fans and a dedicated GPU, I'd trade that for a Steam Deck and then get a stupidly cheap um, laptop just for everything else. So all the games would be confined to the Steam Deck and use the laptop for everything else. I mean, right. those, those, those laptops are basically just de desktops that you get to pick, like what wall you're chained to. That's well, right. yes. <laughs> so that's why you need to buy the new Apple whatever it is. M30. Yeah, but I mean, well, yeah, fucking whatever, whatever it is. Right, hey, man. Listen, <laughs> if if you would like to have a laptop priced as a desktop, yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Let's go ahead and talk about some new games we have this week, starting with thyroids. Mm -mm -mm. Everybody loves them. Some thyroids or theria, theria, theria. I don't know it, theria makes sense. It's a role play <laughs> game, unique combination of dynamic exploration, turn-based combat, crafting. Uh. What does this look like? I don't know. To me, my untrained eyes. What, what is this? Uh, 
Well, I don't know. It looks like you're running. It looks like Pokemon with some, uh, what was the game you used to like to play, Jordan? Uh, Darkest Dungeon? Yeah. yeah. Kind yeah, of getting that it looks from this. very Darkest Dungeon. It's like JRPG meets Darkest Dungeons. It's Weeabooist Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I, th- I think the idea is like you catch uh, you, or you can you can acquire different party members. Can Weeabooist be used go. as an uh, action verb or is it strictly a noun? It, well, no, it's I, I weeb, it's a weeb, he weebs, okay. she weebs, they weeb. It's an adjective. We Yeah, yeah. We, 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 weeb is, is the verb form. Don't, don't weeb at me. All right. I, yes. I, I, I'll weeb you to death, that kind of thing. We yeah, but, uh, yeah, we weeb you to death. Um, that, that's the show title, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you you you, ga- you gather your fighters, and you you need to like select uh, what you're what you're bringing based on where you're going, which is a neat little twist to it. Um, yeah, um, the one complaint I saw in the review is that like the the content is very limited. They have two acts planned, and they might do a third one for the final release. Um, also, the recommended GPU is a GTX 1080, which seems a wee over a kill for pixel graphics. You, you, oh, can is it find out. <laughs> you can find out, though, because they have a demo that you can download. Yes. You know, if you're thinking, nah, man, I'm going to get away running this on my iGPU, you download it, try it out. This is why demos you, you are so important. You need a 1060 at least. Yeah, right? <laughs> Jeez. There's some HD pixels. You say stuff like that, but, I mean, we can all raise our hand. How many times have we, like, went to play a game like a very basic simple looking game and all of a sudden you're, and you're like really <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> we, we, we got we got to do we got to do ray tracing on every single voxel <laughs> minecraft up next uh, zoria i, I don't More think fantasy. there's any other way that i can uh say that name Z- so it's Z- just zoria zoria Z- yes yes <laughs> Z- Z- zori oh. zori um, uh, no, the Zoria Age of Shattering, it's out now as the uh, little thingy indicates, and it got my hopes up because I started reading the blurb. It's like a squad based tactical RPG with fluid turn based combat uh, outposts and followers management. It's like, ooh, ooh, it's like medieval fantasy XCOM. Yeah, no, the, the, the combat's more typical of your Western style uh, turn based RPGs, like the old, old um, Icewind Dale. I'm trying to think of. Yeah, uh, I I, I kind of get like a satellite rain vibe from it, where it's like it's like the it's o- like persistent overworld turn based things, but you still like walk around and can still like interact with things in like realish time. Yeah, uh, 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 time scroll saying Neverwinter in chat, but it, it's uh, Neverwinter was always uh, like the fluid semi turn based because yes, the turns are there, but they're always ongoing, and you have no like per turn actions like this game seems to have so i don't know <laughs> one one thing it, one thing it adds that that i like that i wish more games of that ilk had is dispatch missions where if they give you a bunch of party members you should be able to like send the surplus ones on like missions and like you have to like identify what kind of skills or whatever you need otherwise they're gonna fail but like it's it was always a nice little feature that i enjoyed where you could just like uh especially out of like final fantasy tactics and this game has it which is always good uh, I don't know, man. Get I'm, I'm taking a look at it. And like, uh, it to me, it kind of looks like Baldur's Gate three, but like on a little bit of a budget, or maybe with like a mid twenty ten yeah, era tw- tw- graphics 20, mod. Twenty tens this, yeah, yeah. That's, that's about <laughs> retro vintage. Let's just call it vintage graphics mod. Um, <laughs> well, it's 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 like Nirvana being classic rock now, right? It, it is. It's, it's yeah. It's like it's I, I, now. you know, I don't even ironically say that anymore. I've accepted that at this yeah. point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Nineteen ninety four yeah. was thirty years ago. Yep. Black <laughs> Sabbath <you>. is oldies. <laughs> Fight me. Um, <laughs> it's only twenty four bucks though. <laughs> Um, I mean, it is single player only. Keep that in mind. But I mean, it looks very well done, competently done. And again, mm-hmm. it's twenty four dollars. It's not you know fifty nine ninety nine or three hundred dollars Canadian or whatever it is this week. Yeah, it's two, it's play this one Canadian. if you want the turn based and uh, play Last Epoch if you want the uh, hack and slash real time combat. How many of us have free sync monitors? I do. <laughs> Well, it's always been kind of dodgy. Okay, here, here. Mm, here's a better one. How many of us intentionally bought a monitor for FreeSync? Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> we got no hands on that one. Bro, I, we, yeah, so, 
So P- Pedro, this this is your story. Yeah, the uh, the uh, apparently the requirements for FreeSync are changing. AMD have uh, adjusted the minimum requirements for 1080p and 1440p displays to have 144 hertz refresh rates or higher. So if you are one of those people who, like myself, have a uh, UHD monitor, uh, an LG, I can remember the uh, model name, that is uh, 3840 by 2160, and it has FreeSync, it advertised FreeSync at the time, between 42 and uh, and 60 hertz. Pedro, that sounds too easy to keep track of. Let's break this shit down into three tiers. Yeah. Premium and premium pro. Oh, boy. Yeah. What what, what about the platinum edition? (laughs) That's DLC, man. And and, and Knuckles. Super super free sync premium pro and Knuckles. Extreme EX. And there's also, don't forget the distinction between uh, monitors and TVs Uh and laptops (laughs) because laptops can still have 40 to 60 hertz. That still qualifies as free sync. It's just if you have a TV, it has to be greater than 3440 uh, horizontal resolution and a max refresh rate um, of, uh, yeah, greater or equal to 144 hertz. So I suppose my uh, 1440p, 2560 by 1440, uh, 144 hertz TN panel, that can still advertise FreeSync, although this one is also G-Sync compatible. Because when I still had the 1080, it showed up in the NVIDIA control panels like, you have a G-Sync compatible monitor. It's like, oh, how about that? <laughs> DIL. <laughs> it's been kind of strange, man, when we think about this. Because, like, uh, they, we, all said, we all have FreeSync monitors, but none of us, like, bought a FreeSync monitor with the intention of, like, FreeSyncing all over the house. No, we didn't. Uh, it's just something that was, like, an added bonus. And we're nine years after FreeSync has come out, we're, we're getting something that resembles a slightly you know if you squint it's kind of a standard why because it is kind of important you know i went and looked up like this is a business monitor that i have right now my big chunk is acer monitor it has free sync on it but it's the range is something like between 50 and 73 fps <laughs> fucking useless like a lot of monitors that have free sync on it and like technically which is why I think nobody's ever really actively went looking for it and if you were you had to like read the fucking fine print you couldn't just get a free sync monitor because it could be like oh look wait that's completely useless now at least they can put the branding on these things and get them certified to some and it makes well, a little more sense when you think about like the nvidia at least to trying to keep quality control with the g-sync shit even when it became software they're like nah motherfuckers you gotta hit between this yeah, and this well, and, and, and like to, to 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 your point, uh, like again, like they had free sync monitors everywhere. Like it w- it was just a thing. Like hey, this monitor supports free sync because DisplayPort does support variable refresh rate with like mm-hmm. plus minus fifteen hertz or whatever. So like yes, they all can technically do it. Right. Um. Wh- whether whether or not they can do it well is is another question entirely. But that was always kind of AMD's shtick. Is like oh well we'll 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 kind of we'll kind of hit the lowest common denominator just so that like. We, we, we can we can say that hey we have x amount of units out there that support free sync or whatever and it just to like artificial everything even like this little 13.5 inch uh, desktop monitor thing i have it free sync was on the package i'm like that means nothing and yeah you, you turn it on and again like the variable refresh rate is like minimal at best and you're like, well, like what, what was it, the point of this it hit the previous uh requirements so they just slap the free sync on it's a feature it's a feature <laughs> Does anybody have a G-Sync anything? I, no, I'm not made of money. Oh. No. <laughs> Again, G-Sync compatible, this uh, 2560 by 1440 screen. That's How it. do you even, like, I, I've never bothered to, like, look, other than, like, I know these monitors are capable of, like, I've never went to enable it. Oh, like, what? what, what is the step under Linux to do that, Pedro? Like, you just plug it in and it works? Y- yeah, you plug it in. Uh, if you're using the forceful composition pipeline, you may run into some issues. They, then I'm not uh, using it very much suggest disabling it yeah get but, yeah it is uh it is shows up uh, as adaptive sync in the uh nvidia control panel under the resolution um yeah it's the, on the resolution picker is yes. it really no i mean have you run into situations where you're like oh thank flying spaghetti monster for this <laughs> free sync i tried it and i had to disable uh the v- variable refresh rate on this uh monitor because KDE can do it, 
it mm-hmm. can do it out of the box, uh, so you just tap it on and it works just fine. But then if you run into a game that it starts running poorly, like you're coming out of a loading screen and it's just at the bottom of like the 24 FPS limit that this monitor can hold for the variable refresh rate, you can physically see the flickering of the frames because it's adjusting the refresh rate down to 24 hertz. So you can fucking see it. <laughs> what I mean, it just sounds like free bonus seizures. Yeah, it is. That's why I had to turn it off. <laughs> I mean, I mean that that'll turn your armored core six just straight up into battle seizure robots. But like, I mean, I uh, <laughs> genuinely curious. Like, what what is the like real advantages of like free sync? Does it just make things smooth when? Yeah, the, uh, the, the, it, it, it's the, both anti tearing and uh, a smoothing effect because your the monitor is refreshing with each frame. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so the, the, it, it always shows the correct frame because it's refreshing with each frame and it looks smoother because the refresh is happening as the frame changes. The idea is you get you get some smooth-ish gameplay even though you're not like hitting 60 or whatever. It doesn't yeah, you don't get any Or if any it fluctuates a lot and the monitor can support it, then you can so, see. So I mean that that's available in the Steam Deck now too, right? Yes, actually, I believe so. Variable rate doesn't the OLED at least uh, have like a variable rate no, you can no. lower the refresh rate on the Steam Deck, but it's mm-hmm. not variable refresh. Uh, why, yeah. would, why wouldn't you put that in the Steam Deck, well? <laughs> I th- I, the, the hardware definitely supports it, for sure. Uh, probably, uh, yeah, it's yeah. just a, probably a flickering thing because it's low performance, so it's bound to cause yeah, some flickering like, if they enable it. Th- th- this is, it's, FreeSync's been a thing since, like, GCN, right? And the, it's the nine years old, RDNA, man, yeah. RDNA, too. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I'll, I'll, ostensibly... The, the computer can do it. It's just a matter of they're not turned on in the handheld. Well, what if they, Valve, release a Steam Deck with the G-Sync? <laughs> Piss people off. Well, it's th- that, 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 NVIDIA that, NVIDIA, that. <laughs> that NVIDIA Steam Deck would be too close to a Nintendo Switch, and that's, that's, that's the problem. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we we, we got to talk about it. We, we were all hopeful last week. Our hopes have been dashed on the rocks like the heads of so many Spartan babies. It's settled. Yuzu is going to pay 20 or 2.4. Yeah, 2.4 mil to Nintendo because they re- they realized that they did a bad by enabling piracy and they realized that they they're hurting they're hurting innocent people, specifically Nintendo employees and that they they've, they've changed their minds and Yuzu is going to disappear forever. They're going to stop developing it, they're going to stop distributing it. Uh, and then they're going to go away. So, didn't go to court, get settled got settled out of court. And rampant speculation abounds. Um, I mean, it seems pretty obvious. Either they have some very incriminating messages in their discords that were basically mm-hmm. like, yeah, we're enabling piracy. <laughs> or, again, you have to fight Nintendo, who has a, a effectively infinite legal budget. And even if you could find lawyers to back you up and do this pro bono, pro bono, you need to execute your legal case perfectly to have a chance of winning. Because of the, it go, goes to like some random judge anyways. So yeah, not worth fighting. Uh, they decided to cut their losses and uh, no, no more Yuzu. Yeah, I mean, they said, you know, effective as once was originally published today, uh, they will be pulling their code repositories, uh, discontinuing Patreon accounts and Discord servers, and soon shutting down our websites. We hope these act- actions will be a small step towards ending piracy of all creators' works. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, so, some of this message, though, it's like definitely written as if there was a two point four million dollar gun pointed at their heads. But we now see our projects can circumvent tech- Nintendo's technological prevention measures and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware. They have led to extensive piracy. We've been deeply disappointed that our users are using our software to pirate games. So what does this yeah. mean for you at home? Well, kids, <laughs> check it out. Yuzu and what came Citra, as a shock Citra. to some people. <laughs> Citra. Gone. That was 3DS emulator, right? Yeah. yeah. So your basic summary is they've just agreed to shut down everything, like I just said, man. And about that 2.4 million. I've been seeing a lot of this running around online. People going, how did they have $2.4 million? <laughs> I don't know if Patreon they, was doing very well. They were pulling in about, you know, 30 grand <laughs> a month, somewhere around there. But I, I don't think they're ever going to have to pay, hopefully, for them, $2.4 million. Um, a little bit of background knowledge with this stuff. Usually how a deal like that works, pr- pretty straightforward. You know, it's the perfect scare tactic. Nintendo comes in and says, all right, check this out. This is how this is going to work out. Because this is a suggestion, you know, even if, like, Nintendo doesn't have to get money from them. There's no legal requirement for this from Nintendo, you know, uh, they can say, 
all right, pull all your shit. I, you just disappear. Go away. Websites, code repositories. I don't want to hear a peep from you for fill in X amount of years. You do that, then we're good. We're solid. You don't owe us anything. You know, it's that incentive to, you know, that uh, sort, switch sort of Damocles. Damocles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The hangover just to, you know, make sure you get that compliance you were looking for. And that's a good way to do it. And um, it was kind of shocking to see because the day before this was announced, uh, we got, you know, a little, somebody pulled up a docket and said, hey, they've retained legal counsel. And less than 24 hours later, yeah. the user was like, fuck oh. this, we're out. And uh, you could imagine yeah. like a lawyer looked at it and said, get the fuck out of this. Like, just, yeah, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to end well for you. No, right. They folded really quickly. They, they clearly didn't want to fight it. And uh, I've, there's a lot of uh, rumors and speculation going on on the internet that apparently they had access allegedly to um, ISOs, not just of Zelda, because we know that one leaked early, but other games uh, that they shouldn't have had access to before then, which is why it tended to work so well and why they kept bragging about, ooh, this game, it runs day one. And uh, they probably didn't want that coming out into the light uh, during Discovery, so... All right. Yeah, because yeah. th th <laughs> that, that is definitely in violation of, like, computer fraud and safety stuff, mm -hmm. like... Get, getting getting unauthorized copies of proprietary software that 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 is definitely something they're going to eat shit for uh and I, listen i understand the argument that could be like that sounds like nintendo security problem like you're not wrong but, but <laughs> it is but it like, absolutely but is but two, two two wrongs do not make a right <laughs> yeah, the, and, the, yeah i mean to that point right there you know i was like you know if you found them see the bag of money it's not yours don't mean you can yeah. take it yeah um, you, you, sh you should you should attempt to return the wallet um but yeah and but like this is this is uh, in another way Nintendo wins because this is already having a chilling effect on other emulator projects. There were some posts on Reddit where people were like, "Yeah, I, I'm working on like my own Nintendo DS emulator, and I've decided to shut down my Patreon because I don't want to attract any unwanted attention." Which is what Nintendo wants ultimately. They want yeah. they want to put it's the control. kibosh on this. Yeah. It's it's control. Like, and you might think like uh, Nintendo sued that other dude uh, a couple of years back for like his wages are going to be garnished until the end of days for like running a ROM site. That's because Nintendo wanted to make a fucking example of somebody, and they, they had that one, like, locked down. Again, this was kind of squishy. Nintendo didn't really want to go to court, and I'm sure legal counsel that was retained, they walked in, and Nintendo knew how this was going to play out, because dude's like, all right, you guys have made some money off this. You want to keep that money, or do you want to lose it all? Those are your two options, and they're like, okay, we'll do what we said. And, um, yeah, it's sad to see, but... It, it is what it is, right? You fly too it close to the sun. Court, on that so one. it didn't really set a legal precedent. Nope. <laughs> yeah, every, everything came up Mario on that one for mm -hmm. Nintendo. And they're like, yep, that played out how we needed it to. Next, hey, buy our new Switch, which people will. <laughs> I bet yes, the new Hey Pedro, I bet the new, the new Switch will have G Sync. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it'll have G Sync, but it'll definitely have DLSS. It'll have N Sync. <laughs> <laughs> baby bop 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 it's just gonna have like a little tiny justin timberlake that, in no, there yes. dude that's how that's new nintendo startup sound Shh, secret on behalf of Linux game cast llc i apologize for <laughs> No, no. This, this this is Pedro's audition. He wants he wants to replace Joey Fatone in NSYNC. No, no. I, I, I'm just like, what was it? Tom Cruise was that like where he slid across in the socks? Oh yeah, risky yeah. business. I just imagine that with Pedro, but he falls and snaps his neck. <laughs> oh no, he just keeps he just keeps sliding and sliding and sliding and sliding. It goes by again. Yeah, it's like fucking Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> then then, uh, then then he then he gets eaten by a ghost. What are some uh, other good um, Nintendo? Switch emulators out of like right Ryujinx. Ryujin X is the is the other one. Yeah, I I, I bet they're like I, I'm I'm curious. We have we haven't heard hide nowhere here from them. I I think they're like trying to keep their heads down and like yeah, not they're going. All right, themselves. what do they have on us? What's like the really bad stuff we've done? Do we have any? No, cool. Shut your fucking mouth and just don't say anything. Don't, right? don't, mean, don't, don't, don't talk about it. Don't look at them. Don't, even don't. when we come back to like the user was very like, like, I honestly don't know what would on like user's discord or anything like that, but like they're front facing what I read. Like user was like, we're not going to tell you how to pirate anything. We're not going to show you how to hack your like get mm -hmm. keys and shit like that. Like they were very upfront about that. I don't know about, um, 
any other emulators, but you, this is an open source project. Like you, you, you can't kill the snake by cutting its head off. It doesn't work like that. Like no, now, no, everyone's cloned that Git repo and yeah, all the sub modules and everything. Yeah, everybody, we, we so like, <laughs> hey, they, look, I got a copy of that, and <laughs> by this they're, time they're, next year, there's a high probability there will be six users. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, none of them will be staffed and being developed by. The for the former people, and yeah, like the, the, and that's the big thing is now now the the code exists, but there's not going to be any organized body that's going to continue sort of pushing that needle forward. And then on the other hand, like after the Switch Two comes out, Nintendo is not really going to care as much, un- un- unless unless you can still play old Switch games on 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 the Switch Two. Which I don't oh, know. there you go. There's the argument for, uh, pardon me, uh, backwards compatibility. Just have, uh, <laughs> just support the old games on the new console, and then mm-hmm. you can always enforce the well, uh, the, the so, game so is still current. It's still a- here, <laughs> and here and here's the genius thing because it's a slightly more powerful console. Oh my god! Hey, these games run at like 720p 60 now. Oh, yeah. look, look, you you wanted better performance on your old Switch games. Here you go, buy our new because console. Because it, it was pretty sad to see, you know, the, the Zelda game that leaked early. It was on release day running like shit on the Switch and running at 720p 60 on the Steam Deck. That's pretty bad. <laughs> That's really, really bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, like, it sucked because, like, I, I think we all wanted somebody to at least take, take a Nintendo couple, that a pack or yeah. something, at least take a shot at it, right? <laughs> right. right. Like, just uh, it, even though, you know, it's fucking. Uh, what is it, David and the Giant? I'm sure, sure the fucking gi- Giant's gonna squish fucking David in this case, but, like, at least just be like, fuck you. Yeah, and, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm in a weird case where, as, as a person who bought a Nintendo Switch and has bought, like, Nintendo Switch games, mm-hmm. I would rather play them on the emulator because it's a better experience than the actual hardware. And I, again, I spent my money on it. I should be able to do what the fuck I want with my code. I, I, I hear you, but uh, us here but at Nintendo, here's the thing, though. Fuck you, yes. Also, fuck you. But just buy our new switch; it'll do what you need. Yeah. But more, more importantly, fuck you. I mean, yeah, absolutely, fuck you and your money. <laughs> we're sorry. We're sorry. Oh, we're so sorry. sorry. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> you're, gonna buy, you're gonna go play cassette beasts. Actually, I probably should go play cassette beasts. Uh, it it might be kind of fun. Good news, everybody. Uh, Linux desktop market share has uh, cracked four percent. It's official. And uh, that's it. Windows is dead now. We're just uh, <laughs> Microsoft. The nuts are going to be shutting down Thursday. It's going to be weird. This comes from uh, Linux. Weird name. Linuxiac. I don't know, dude. Like, pff, sure. It's, it's, Linux grows it's, it's, it's like the world. According to StatCounter's data, by the end of February 2024, Linux has achieved 4.03 desktop market share, period. What does that mean? I don't know. There's numbers and graphs and stuff to back it up, and it even says stat counter on the bar chart, so you know it's legitimate. And uh, I, I went digging around because I, I saw a lot of people. They're like, so how much of those was the Steam Deck? I'm like, well, okay. I went and looked up the uh, Steam hardware survey. Apparently 35% of Steam and Linux users, uh, and this is going by the AMD, AMD custom GPU uh, 0405. Um, that popped Aerith. in. Yeah, I was like, all right, one year ago, that was about 21%. So, like, looking at these charts and, you know, speculative, uh, fun, happy math, uh, Venn math, anyway, so it's probably not accurate, about 35% uh, from that uh, 4% being the Steam Deck. So we got on a 4% boost over and the, the Steam and Deck. And this is, like, uh, this is based on uh, browser usage and whatnot. Yeah. Um, all, all I can say is, like, good, good, like the fucking cockroach from Family Guy. And uh, you know what? Credit to this fucking article. I would. I'm, I'm glad you, I, it's on Linux, Linux Yak or whatever. But it's nice to see some pushback. It's like, yeah, Linux isn't hard to install. There's a lot of modern installers where you just press some fucking buttons and you get a Linux on your computer. I two things I'm curious about this data though. Um, number one, what's the geological break or the geographical breakdown? Down right. Like, I'm, I'm curious if like a lot more of Linux usage is coming out of like Latin America and like uh, Eastern and Central Europe. Uh, because you know it's lower lower income places there, um, it's easier to get it, uh, Linux will extend the the life of your older computer. So you know, no, you like to say that, but I always think about like uh, most of those are going to be heavy populated um, with like just old uh, business PCs that are got a copy of Windows on. Like they're not paying anything for the software. 
or pirating yeah, but, Windows. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, for all the all the modern software they can run on their copy of like Windows XP or whatever. The other thing I'm I'm curious about is how much of this is like Raspies and their ilk, because those are a lot. Those are like a not insignificant percentage of like Linux PCs out there but in the wild. Dudes, are this those is, running web browsers? Desktops. Yeah. Yeah, well, you gotta go down. You gotta download the Minecraft jar somehow, right? <laughs> W get. Repo. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Like, you're, people, people use MIT Scratch. It's not unreasonable to assume that people would like use a use the browser on their ARM computer for something. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying yeah. it would probably be statistically insignificant. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. Because... Show, show me the numbers. <laughs> Those are probably just if if they are going out into the internet, which yes, there's probably a significant chunk of them that are, but they're not using a web browser. And then my, my third question is, how much of these are bots? Let's how the out. absolute shit. Okay, now here's another point of contention. Uh, they, they split out Chrome OS. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get wrecked. I mean, come on. We, <laughs> it's got a web browser. I mean, th- that is the most desktop Linux of desktop Linux in the history of desktop Linux. Yeah, uh, Google likes to pretend like it's not based on Gentoo anymore. <laughs> um, also, pour one out for our brothers and sisters over on Team Free BSD with not point not one percent. Then again, hey man, they're, you they're, know they're, what? They're you got to imagine as a BSD user, you look at that and you're like, not bad. Yeah. Yeah, and you you I don't, get get these people out of my operating system. I don't want people using my, my uh, shit. Now you're thinking like, what's the breakdown here? It's seventy two percent Windows, fifteen percent Mac OS X. So you would think that would be like, does that, way does that count smaller. iOS or is that iOS is separate? It has to. No, no, that's gonna piss me off though. If they didn't split out iOS and because like I don't even see Android getting a mention yeah, they're, in here. They're, I I don't think that includes the mobile. Okay. Mm. <laughs> 15%, uh, all right, and 60, 6.11% unknown. Like, that, what? Those, those, those are bots. <laughs> yeah, those, those, those are definitely bots. Vivaldi users. Vivaldi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> there are dozens of us. Dozens. And but yeah, like, no, I, 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 I suspect the, the increase in Steam Deck sales probably has something to do with it, because, yes, the Steam Deck does have a web browser. But who already? the fuck is using it? <laughs> As, aside from the guy running a, running his hackathon <laughs> project off of it, like I mean, Steam itself. Uh, if you're playing a game, you go to the overlay and you go, "All right, I'm playing this game. Well, how do I get past this part?" That might be catching it. <laughs> like the, the Chromium embedded framework little browser window that they have, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the Steam Deck definitely contributed. I'm going to say it's going to be a, a pretty small amount. You know, this is not like, ah, oh, ha, thanks, Steam Deck. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, Steam Deck. You added. But it does come down to, you know, desktop usage is declining. That's just reality. There's no, like, unless you got, I'm not arguing your fanfic. Uh, we can back this up with numbers. Because desktop usage has uh, kind of changed these days it used to be you know all of us growing up we inherited desktops why our parents had desktop pcs and these kind of showed up you're like okay well that's how we use it then later on laptops and all that but i think in 2024 for uh, my perspective is desktop usage has kind of been broken down people who are doing content creation heavier work they have desktop but if you're on the consumption side of pc use you know you're watching stuff and like maybe you play the occasional game you can probably get away with a laptop you probably you do. You, you, you don't even need a laptop. You have a cell phone and a Chromecast. Or mobile. And, yeah. And that's like, where, you know, even, you know, your Zoomer, Tumor, or whatever, <laughs> the Tumors, yeah, let's call them Tumors. The, uh, the, the Tomb Raiders? Yeah. The, the, those, those triangular youths. <laughs> the Tumors. And, yeah, we're, we're, the real young ones are definitely going to be even more mobile than, uh, you know, the people who are like, all right, you know, my primary device is my Android or iOS and maybe a tablet, maybe on the, like, sketchy, like a, uh, a laptop maybe, maybe, maybe a chromebook they get from yeah. their school or their work so or whatever the, yeah. i brought this up on wednesday is now desktops are more and more i mean the market is shrinking but it's becoming more of a special device and that's kind of a good thing for linux though because again you don't just inherit that windows desktop pc as a kid as a lot of us did and you're like oh okay we're, that's what we're going to be using now you got to sit because you didn't have a desktop at all to play with and like but i need to build one because i want to get into streaming or i want to do this and this and this Linux is now a choice because you got to build the damn thing from the get go, you know. And yeah, you're I, I, thinking I mean, about you, it. You can still you can still buy a pre-built computer these days. 
It, it, I, I, oh, I think you the, can. You can. Like, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the type of person who was getting ready to build. Now, you can also buy a, unlike when we were growing up, you can buy a pre-built with Linux on it mm-hmm. from yes, multiple sir. companies. Yes. Including <laughs> Dell. <laughs> yeah. It's and Lenovo. Yeah. So we're seeing Dell, Lenovo, HP, um, then the Linux specific, uh, like T- Tuxedo System, System 76, 76 uh, Entroware, if they're mm. still around. I hope so. <laughs> so I, bring, bring, bring back Gateway. Someone needs to bring back the cows. The cows. <laughs> Ooh. Don't don't get my ideas, dude. I wonder how hard it would be to get. We we need to do a thing where we call up Canonical uh, Tuxedo uh, Star Labs and see how long it takes to get them to agree to install and ship us a laptop with Windows 11 on it. Okay. <laughs> 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 and, and that's when they just hung up on us and they, they yeah, never so accepted that's our that's when calls they again. stopped replying to the emails just oh no no, no this is gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try to speed run this <laughs> you just show, show, show up to Mark Shuttleworth's house and be like I want Windows 11 in like, un, in like underwear and, and a Mark Shuttlesworth is like I don't sell fucking hardware get out of here <laughs> too bad give it to me or I will now. <laughs> okay so uh who remembers uh the game Area 51. The, uh, the, the, uh, the, the light gun pew pew one. Who remembers there? No, 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 no. Not that one. This one. The other Area 51. Right? From 2005. Now, what Jordan was saying, yes. I think we all, if you've probably seen it, if you're old enough, like in an arcade, I'll tell you what those are when you're older. Uh, or, like, I've seen them <laughs> in bars, like, repurposed, you know, because after they've been clapped out. It was a game about running around and killing shit in Area 51. Now, Jordan, apparently this is uh, can, tied into the Shooty Pew Pew light gun game, right? Yes, this is, this is, this is, a, uh, this is a continuation of it. Uh, ba- back when, back, back in ye olde 2005, when they realized that arcades were dead and hipsters hadn't resurrected them, <laughs> uh, they, they, they wanted to bring old franchises into the home, and so they attempted this with Area 51. Apparently, this one was actually sponsored by the Air Force, which is kind of neat. Right, um, it was on PC, PS2, and Xbox. Get off yes. this thing's lawn <laughs> now. And what what so what's interesting about this is they found a near complete version of the source code at a THQ employee's garage sale, uh-huh. uh, and it had it had the code for the engine, the PS2 and Xbox version, and an unfinished GameCube version. And this is what is being posted on Yield to GitHub now. Is uh, the current release is the uh, is the state of the software as is. And right now, the main goal is let's get this building on a modern system because it's not 2005 anymore. Uh, we're we're going to need to update some shit. First and foremost, I need to go to better yard cells. Yes, right? clearly. <laughs> like, dude, I rarely, I think maybe in my life I've stopped it, like stopped from driving. I'm like, oh, let me go check and see what's going on over there. And it's usually and like, like an estate you, cell. You ne- And you never know. You never know. Sometimes there's fucking gold. Sometimes it's just all crap. 100% and- poo. Yeah, hundred percent poo, and it's complete coin flip. Complete. Coin I flip. mean, it is like me going to a uh, flea market and remembering to get some cash. This is not a problem <laughs> these days, but like back in two thousand five, everyone would only take cash, and if I remember to do that, I wouldn't find anything. Now to this, I did a little bit of research. So this guy uh, who found this at a garage sale was also the person who has been actively working on reverse engineering the original game to modern and to get it updated. Mm-hmm. Well, it's probably oh, a little, stalkery business. <laughs> little more likely that a former THQ Nordic uh, employee reached out and said, hey. <laughs> I'm doing a garage sale. Come on this By way. the way, I'm just, there might be a little thing over here you I'm, I'm selling buy. these old floppy disks. Yeah, yeah don't know what's on them, but I'm just saying you might want to buy them. No, 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 no idea. No. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, fucking buy them. I'll just give them to you. Here. It's just fucking throwing, throwing hard tracks at the cat. <laughs> Ow, those are heavy. Stop Got it. his foot on his neck and he's like, listen, here. Mm. <laughs> Just shoving SATA cables in his mouth like Rah! you know you want it <laughs> yeah right so that that's how that played out uh it's always good i mean this is that's like legit game preservation if we can get a hold of the source code like that's how you preserve games right there man not the binary fucking blobs 
and there there are no assets with this uh, apparently apparently no assets came with uh with the, with the uh, code code dump from uh from yield yard sale so yeah <laughs> How very uh <laughs> well lads were fucked uh but you know what? <laughs> well i you can't, you can't buy, buy this game on steam right no you can't but uh i th- this is one of those situations that i suspect someone's uploaded the entire game somewhere so you can probably find r- 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 rhymes with schmarchive.org <laughs> yes <laughs> i don't think archive.org like cares like bitch yeah you know we got it fuck you <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, I, I listen, dude, the mascot for archive, ar- I love archive. I've given them money and I will continue giving them money. Should be the fucking T post anteater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck you, fuck you. I'm an anteater. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, fuck you. I'm trying to like preserve the fucking internet and the collection of human knowledge and keep doing the good work. Now, one thing we, if you, if you've ever gotten streaming, or just even really dabbled around with streaming, probably something that you noticed real quick. Motorcycle guy coming home. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 le- he left early. He's, he's back. Yeah, yeah I was like, hey, here he comes. Here he comes. All right. Uh, you didn't make it to the recording this week, motorcycle guy. Um, <laughs> all right. So you're setting up like a streaming rig and you start playing and you realize like as soon as you start streaming and you try to start recording that, uh, your performance goes to poo. You're like, uh-oh. You know, maybe you're not on a big, um, you know, fire breathing CPU and GPU. And you're like, hmm, what's a way around that? Like, oh, I, well, I have this other not great computer. I'm like, maybe I could stream that. And yes, that's what a lot of people do. They have multi-stream setups. And like, it's a great way to make use of like maybe underpowered hardware. If you wanted to do that, you had to like dick around with NDI, which is closed source proprietary. And it's squirrely. As, that, don't you? Yeah, it was linked on the new tech. A website which was interesting and i had some things to say to him but i chose not to um, <laughs> and what that does is allow you to send the audio and video from one pc to the other between obs's and that's always worked but as i said it's squirrely always has been and it's closed source so sometimes it breaks the other solution is to use capture cards your hardware capture cards or you want to send it out and split it out and capture it in the other the problem with that, a little bit of a problem with that, is uh, you know a really good capture card, or even like a really okay capture card, ain't cheap. It costs about two dragons. Oh, um, <laughs> maybe we need option three here. So what do we got? I'm like, well, I could build a better, bigger, better PC, or I could spend you know a PC's worth of hardware for the capture cards, or you can fight with NDI. We're using this brand new technology that's only been around for about a decade called WebRTC. That's how we're communicating. Jordan's all just covered in WebRTC, he's dripping with it. Pedro is uh, aglow with it himself. I, I, I am currently having issues with WebRTC uh, because <laughs> I can barely hear what Ben's saying. I'm just dripping wet. Yeah. All right, now that we've got to cut that out. Um, <laughs> so uh, here's another option. WebRTC is uh, peer-to-peer. Whip. Yep, whip, UDP-based, and that's always kind of been the dream with WebRTC. Like, I just want to send uh, this source from this PC to this PC with the audio, and let's do it with super low latency, you know, like less than a second. Now we're going to be able to do that, hopefully. This is a draft for web support so you can just right click add a source give it an ip address on one box come over with the uh, ingest box click that in done good to go not only will this work on your local area network you can do this over the interwebs on a wan connection so we were talking in the pre-pre super shows and this might get interesting like say we're playing lethal company jordan can just send me his uh, screen like stream it right to be, and I can put it out on our live stream. And like, it's going to be high quality, low latency that we can just match it up to make it look like we're doing, um, squad streaming. If you've ever seen that on Twitch, this is basically a homebrew version of that. And then we don't have to worry about any of the overhead of like getting converted to nothing. It's just a straight, nice, direct connection. And again, we're going to be able to use it for like podcasting a bunch of, bunch of uses. But that's something I thought I'd just let it give everybody mention. This is a little draft. Uh, you, you'll be seeing this in the future. You know, a lot of work is, went into getting WebRTC 
uh, built into OBS and these tools are, oh, but my brain is like coming up with all these crazy ways to misuse this. Looking forward to it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good stuff. And yeah, like it's, it's been 10 years. WebRTC kind of like came out around the time that we started doing this. Shit. Yeah. We, we were eyeing it very, very early on. Cause like, oh man, we want to cut over the shit. We don't ditch Skype as soon as possible. We didn't have and an it, option. I mean, yeah. we didn't want, we didn't want to ditch Skype until Microsoft broke it. That's, yes. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, until they, they killed the old client, which was step for the long one. Yeah. Microsoft to buy Skype. Step one. Let's nerf the old client. Oh man. But yeah, no, the, the, this this is good. WebRTC is basically everywhere now. And just making an, a generic way to consume that means that now OBS is capable of just ingesting and outputting or integrating into a lot more complex systems, which is neat. I mean, it is. And it, it, the options for just being able to casually bring your friends on. Mm -hmm. Like, say you're gaming. You know, there, there's no complex setup. There's, you're not doing any of this crazy shit. No, or he, he, even just for like having multiple people in like a fucking call, right? Like right. it's easier to just have everyone just connect to OBS. You don't have to worry about uh, capturing Routing you don't Discord have to, like, audio and getting Discord into OBS. Chop, and, chopping up the the little yeah. sections of of Discord mm -hmm. so right. that you can like have every and then oh and and then if someone drops out of the call and then you have to get everyone to turn the camera on in the right order yeah. so that they can preserve their spot. Yeah, getting getting rid of that would be fan fucking tastic. And then you're not going to be limited to things like you know Discord likes to binge you down. It's like oh no, we're we're, we're going to need some uh, nitro dollars for the 1080p i'm like what if i want to do 4k i was like oh double nitro dollars give us a <laughs> this you'll be able whatever you can stream to each other baby mm -hmm. i'm also curious like doing this over WireGuard. i wonder i wonder how, if that's like feasible as well we're over WireGuard right now huh? yeah. oh yes I, I mean i mean like we're not doing WireGuard from like here to jitsi right like i guess you have WireGuard from no Jitsi's no right? no because that's like yeah plugged into the router. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just having a wire guard vpn that the three of us connect to yeah and then, and then doing it in there that, but why yeah. <laughs> don't have to worry about ip whitelisting oh yeah that means yeah. udp homie <laughs> <laughs> some of the packets that make it <laughs> more than the ones i've gotten tonight <laughs> i don't know man you, you go go clean the cable again <laughs> you, you, gotta, you gotta blow on it like those old right? cartridges yes <laughs> give it a lick tastes just like raisins ladies and gentlemen that's gonna do it for the main segment but we got a little bit of hate mail for you this week if you want to send us a message head over to linuxemcast.com hit the contact button read the fuck mothering page see if you can put two and 13 together and once you're done with that pull the slot it's called send at the bottom and if you got everything right it'll reward you by saying message sent successfully and if you type in something good something worth reading we might just talk about it right here on this very show. This was actually a YouTube comment in response to something we talked about last week. This this was a this was deep into the thread. This is from our agents, and they say Nintendo owns its games and is licensing third party games for foreign legacy play. Pirates steal everything and pretend they don't understand the difference. These people do not care about preserving a damn thing. Them getting clapped in courts is a goose thing for the industry. Goose piracy thing. equals piracy. That's what this is wrote. Goose goose, goose thing. thing. <laughs> it's it's the untitled goose thing. Like, okay, let's be real. Yeah, a, a, a lot of people are using emulators for piracy. I would say like the vast majority of emulators for like current systems, i.e., current Yuzu, we're, Yes, we're being we're being used <laughs> for piracy. But also, piracy has like a very broad definition. And again, in my case, if I want to use Yuzu to play games that I legitimately purchased. Like, yes, that's still that's still piracy that still falls under the circumvention of the encryption and whatnot. But I still paid money for it. Right. So, I, yeah, mo 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 most people, most people haven't. And I, I, I get the, I get that that argument. But like that only that only holds water for like the sale lifetime of the console. And again, it's not like these people would like go out and buy a switch anyways. Right. I, I don't think these are lost sales. No, the, the, as has been established many times in the past, a someone who is going to pirate something just for the sake of pirating it, you were never going to sell the game to that person. Now, there's a lot of people who would go, okay, I'm going to pirate this because I'm poor or I'm a university student or I'm literally, I can't really afford, but I have some free time and I'd like to play this game. That's the people you want to cater to because the moment they have some money and I 
know that for a fact because I'm one of those people. While Me I was too. at university, I pirated a lot of shit. I did. I absolutely did. But then over the years, I've been making it a point of buying. I used to play that game a lot. I'm going to buy it. Even if I don't touch it anymore, it's just, I'm going to buy it because I played it. So there, there is a lot of uh, nuance that this particular comment seems to outright ignore, which I don't like either. I don't like the people that are all for Yuzu and it's like they did nothing wrong and I don't like the opposite, which is what we have. So let's let's not be, you know, Nintendo about this and let's let, let let's stand in the middle. Let's let's be I mean you want to argue with us, but like he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. Then again, the people who are saying that yes, preservation of video games is a very important thing. You have Warner Brothers this week going out of their way to getting all of the Adult Swim games on Steam delisted. Uh, you have uh, Epic Ubisoft shutting down the crew. You have however many games that EA has shut down over the years. This shit, preservation, is important. And the shit that... Won't you think about game collectors for a fucking minute, Pedro? <laughs> all right, listen, <laughs> if I can just the, get the, it the anywhere, markets. all this, yeah, yeah like... Where is my scarcity? If you can just make infinite copies. I mean, I need this stuff to appreciate in value. I've gotten these games graded. I don't need you motherfuckers being able to just go download some ROMs <laughs> and but, play but, it. But, but, like, but here's, here's the thing, though. Insane, those insane collectors will always still exist, and they still want the physical copies. The, the yes. digital copies being available is immaterial because it's not about being able to play the game. It's about owning the thing. It's about having and the, that's the specific a, that's a very small minority of people. <laughs> I want you to think about pro it like pro this. Probably just like a small minority of pirates because, again, Nintendo makes billions of dollars. Microsoft yeah. makes billions of dollars. Sony makes billions of dollars. Do you know what would be better, though, from, Jordan? What? More billions. Yeah. Yes, they're not for, making for me, all of the billions, I, 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 so I therefore the it's billions. wrong. I, give, give me billions. I don't know, man. Like, um, preservation and all that. Like, if you want to get serious about the preservation talks uh, and you want to get my interest, like, let's talk about putting some, uh, like, legal mandates in place where after 20 years you have to release the source code shit i brought that up before yeah like or, actual uh, preservation or for or uh, make, for online online services don't yeah. release the source code yes. for servers once once the game but there is also the, a part of me there's a part of me like if i put something out into the fucking world like uh, games of physical whatever i'm like i made that and I should be able to say, well, I don't want to sell that anymore, and I don't want people to buy it anymore. And like, I can see the argument. And like, it's it, it's real easy to look at it. And it's like, well, big soulless corporation fucked I'm thinking about like an but, individual though, like one seller on Pinterest is like, I don't want that out anymore. And then, no, I. But but second secondary markets exist, and like, what what one once it's yeah, out, like and you, you, like you, you have you, the things, and look, they're already out there. They they come in little cartridges. Yeah. It's already out there. That's yeah, not a problem. No, it's not. My my thing is is like it's already preserved. It's backed up. You're ready to go. Well, well, again, un until until all the hardware capable of running that game doesn't work anymore. Yes, which, and which until the Nintendo cartridges, which have been, uh, if you have like the OG uh, Switch cartridges, mm -hmm. uh, those, if you haven't plugged them into a Switch or power cycled them at all recently, the flash is starting to die, and the game. Is starting to go away. There are. That's fine. I got a backup. <laughs> I, I made it. No, I, then, I, then, I, then, I, you're, then you're then you're a fucking dirty pirate, and yeah, you're going yeah, to jail. You're a dirty fucking pirate, and uh, Nintendo would like your number, please. No, no, no. I'm talking about the thing I sold that I made. I have a backup of that. N N Ninten Nintendo's going to sue you anyways. <laughs> that, that, that's what they do. We're not talking about Nintendo. We're talking about the thing I made. Yeah, Nintendo. Yeah, I'm trying to actually have a conversation here, motherfucker. Think about it. <laughs> You're talking about the hypothetical thing you made. That yes, you have your own copy of it, and you don't want anyone else. And to I have it anymore, preserved for whatever reason. Right, right. And I've backed right. it up. But, but, it's but good like, to go. if, if, if if you sell copies of it, and then other people have it, and then they sell it, like you've lost control over that. That that's, oh, no, that's the nature fine. Of like, that's shit. secondary sell. I'm saying if they uh, take the thing and they see this is where it gets squishy and digital, though, isn't it? Because if we're talking about physical items, it's like well. What if I use that and I made some copies of myself and like well, knockoff? So that's what we call in the physical world is like knockoff copies. Is that like, well, there's nothing you can do about that. But until you start selling them, then that's that's trademark infringement, right? Yes, like, that that's that's that is piracy. When you're actively selling something that you don't have the resale rights to, 
that's piracy <laughs> yeah but and 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 again like to 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 ven's point like the, the whole like treating digital objects as like physical objects doesn't hold any water and like people are still trying to like insist that they are the same thing when they're not and they need to be treated differently Very that's right not. <laughs> like your intellectual property and millions that went into developing something doesn't count so get over it i I mean, that's that's the case where uh, people who are working on like movies and shit in Warner Brothers, when that gets thrown out, doesn't count. Yes, they don't get to, they and, don't get to use all that the shit on the resume. Who made the games? Uh, the actual developers, the human beings who made the crew, the actual developers and human beings who made the Need for Speed games. Did they do it? Or, wait, did, did that, they like not? Were they not employed when they were doing? Yeah, this? that's the thing. The now they were employed to do that, and uh-huh. now their legacy, the thing that they did can't be bought anymore bitch because... i didn't hire you for legacy i hired you to make a product to sell to motherfuckers yeah, yeah. And, and, and 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 don't i have the right to preserve no that product you don't once? no well, it's, it's right here in the contract clearly. you signed before i hired you right. and that's, that's, the that, yeah, that that, right and that's, that's the problem that right there is the problem that is the that, core of the problem and that's, that's why what preservation i was talking important. about let's right. do and, some and legal you... shit with that that's yeah. how you attack it this is how we actually get actual real preservation what we yeah, got right it, now is it a stop needs to gap. be a, a legal yeah. thing. What we got yeah, is well, a stopgap, and what with that stopgap comes with a lot of unsavory motherfuckers, the just cheap bastards. Like, well, I'm just not yeah. going to pay for anything ever. Pe- 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 people have to bend over backwards to do this sorts of these these sorts right. of right. And we got to do all this. Like, we're all on the same page here. We're yeah. just trying yes. to get a full picture of it. <laughs> if you're at home, going, "Why we're not fighting here? We're we're, we're, so, we're, 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 we're very we are, much we are uh, we're aggressively agreeing, agreeing with each with other. One another. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, having solved yet another problem. Yes. <laughs> Away! <laughs> yes. We must now go before we do, if you like our, our nonsense. Our needs me. You want to help us out. Become one of our beautiful party patrons. Get a gang of extra stuff each and every week. You get this show live, unfiltered, uncut, in podcast format. You get Linux Gamecast. You don't have to worry about fucking ads. You get the highest quality available up on YouTube where you can download it. And you know what? Preserve it yourself. You can still find ways to download the uh, YouTube version, but get a fucking download version with this. You know, just click it. Get it done. Access to our Discord, where we hang out the other six days of the week, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Tap that support button. You'll find things like, oh, I don't know, wish lists. Let's see what Jordan's got on his wish list this week. I've, I've, I haven't updated that, so it's the same. As oh, last week. you've sold out. You want one of those hackers? To, yeah, the stream decks are pretty cool. I use one all the time. I'm working on a video for one of those. Rise and shit. Pedro's got one as well, which no longer has clamps on it, thanks to her. No, the death. clamp is gone. It was the Multi- cheapest multiple item. Fans. Thank you very much, Aromatic Dev. Now he's full of fans. You can put him in a <laughs> Kylo Ren headset. I got one for the studio. That's how you end up on this wall back here where I will publicly shame you. We do appreciate it. You can send in a note, which we will read. And I'm probably done dressing up as Sonic for 2024 so <laughs> depends how cold it gets in the studio right like well you know what i'm glad i got that on even when i was i was like it's getting summertime because there's fuck no way i can wear that during the summer <laughs> dude I, like it's bad enough in here in the thong all right ladies and gentlemen that's gonna do it for this week i do want to thank a new executive producer over at patreon.com oh, forward slash what, Linux one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Yeah, you thought I'd just put that in there. That's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that, I that, fucking that's, that's love that name. <laughs> I legitimately it's not, it's not love it. at the top of the list, right? Dude, like, yeah. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, our latest executive producer. You get like bonus stuff. Like if you hop into our Discord, you get the video version of our pre pre super shows and live if you want to check that out. A couple other things thrown in. Also on the Twitch side, I want to thank Basil for tier two sub and Mir. For those prime Bezos box. There we go. We got the plugin out of the way. Now, all we can do, put a bow on it and cue that music. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be here each and every Saturday night, 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Doing this nonsense, we invite you to come check it out live. If you get a chance, if you want to scream at me, I'm Old Man Ven, just a Ven on Twitter or Zitter, whatever you want to call it, Ven on the Mastodons. And uh, then on the blue skies. Now I, you know, Jordan, I did the thing. I did the yeah. DNS record. All right, yeah, the server yeah. record thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Nice. I, if you, if you would like to download a Jordan Swung, you can find copies of me on Mastodon at Frojo at Mastodon.com at Frojo at bsky.app or at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Yeah. 
I suppose you can technically find me, uh, along with your old timey <laughs> uh, physical copies of video games, just because I've actually gone out of my way to get quite a few of those. So maybe I'll see you on eBay one of these days. I'm at unaccounted for on mass.linuxgamecast.com because that is the last of the social networks that I'll ever be on. Why do you say absolute shit like that, you fucking sit? I, I, I know, like, <laughs> in, in two years, it's gonna be like, oh man, I'm all about Chris Blort. Chris Blort is the greatest website ever. <laughs> Websitewars.com. Time for some credits. <laughs> hey, that was last week's credits. Boo! Uh-oh. No, hang on. Uh, I just one, two, didn't three, update four, that. Five. No! <laughs> no, no, no. The, I just this, forgot to update that. I was in a rush. This, 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 this is the right one. All right. Well, we yeah, got to yeah. thank our advisors, Omega Sartharin. We got to thank our executive producers, Barb Grant, Scott Michaud, Tomacast, Mike uh-huh. T, Drummer, Tomas, Hakeem, oh, no, David Isha, Ian, Kaplow, Karen Ducky, and 1234, and Super Death Stoat, Empty, and Glorious Egg Roll, our little Nikki fans. Yeah. From the Sea Monsters, Renault Rider X, Machina, Treasure Verse, and Nuda, Justin, Darkwing, System D, Dancing Joe, the Kresny, Krim, and Ogi One with the Death Notes, Nova, Chad, Romeo, uh, Renee, Leonardo, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom, Two Thought, Wad, Stephen B, Beck, Dodger, Ah, Zeno. <laughs> Calm down, uh, Kylo. Pebble, Jalo, Piper. All of our fine, upstanding cannibals. <laughs> uh, Carl, Mike, Earth, Theory, Linux, New World, is not bliss. Johnny, Shep, Game of Tron, you know, DSN, Joe, Aromatic, Dove, and Kaijo Rai. You're all and truly blam. wonderful. Until next week, get out there and preserve hard <laughs> as you possibly can. Jam it. You gotta preserve it. They're preserve jamming our radar. radar. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the preserve. It's the preserve. The jam. Pre- preserve the jam. Ram jams. <laughs> that if I Whoa, Black Betty. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> amber lamps. Hashtag amber lamps. Whoa, Black Betty. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>